Alright, so as you know, these ghosties that you can get, they're all the rage around Halloween, of course. And I always wanted one for the other models that I have already printed. You can't just use one that already exists because it doesn't fit your model, obviously, so you just have to print it huge. So today I just want to design one and use that for a model I already have, and it's not that hard because Blender has a physics simulator, and all you need to do is essentially drape the model with a sheet. Let's get into it. In our last Blender tutorial we got some flack for being too fast, so I'm going to try and be really slow for this one, guys. We're trying this with a Xenomorph model. Xenomorph might be a better word for this one. Uh, I chose this one in particular because it is very detailed and using the physics simulator for something detailed can be tricky, so I just want to cover all bases. First up, you don't really need to worry about scaling for this because everything will be relative to the size of the model that you import. Find a suitable model, download it in STL format and import it into Blender. If you have a 3MF file, then load the 3MF file into your slicer and right click on the model and export as STL. Before we get started, I should explain view options to anyone not familiar with Blender. Holding the middle mouse button and moving the mouse will allow you to rotate the view. Pressing the num buttons on the keyboard will allow you to view from specific viewpoints, for example num7 is a top view. Scrolling the middle mouse button zooms in and out. Holding shift and middle mouse button allows you to pan your view. Shift Z allows x-ray view, and that's basically it for now. First thing I do with pretty much every imported model is I move it to the center or the origin, and I put the model center point as the origin, so it is always at 0, 0, 0. So click on the model and in the top left toolbar, click on object, click on set origin, and click on origin to center of mass. You'll see on the right side in the transform toolbar, the values have changed. Change all those to zero and the model will sit in the middle. Okay, great. Now you have your model. What you need now is your sheet. Press Shift A on the keyboard and this brings up the Add tool. Click on Mesh and Plane to generate a plane. If you don't see it, then it's huge. So press S and move the mouse to scale it down and left click to confirm. Now press Shift A again and go to Mesh and Cube to generate a cube. Press S and move the mouse to scale it down. Press G and Z to move the cube just under the model. Now press S and Shift Z to scale along the axes, excluding the Z axis. This will be our base where our sheet can fall onto. Press G and Z to move it along the Z axis and position it just a little bit under the model. You don't need to be exact for this. Now click on the top plane. This is going to be our sheet that's going to fall over the alien, so it needs to be the right size to fit. On the right side in the transform toolbar, you'll see the dimensions. Change it to however big you need it to cover your model. Just estimate at this point because we can change it later. Okay, on the right side, you'll see a toolbar with lots of icons. You need to select the physics settings, which is a little orbiting planet icon. Click on that and then click cloth. Great, your upper cube is now a cloth and it will behave as such. Now click on the lower cube under the model, go to physics and select collision. And also lower down under soft body, there is a ticked box called single sided. Untick this. You can also do the exact same thing for the model you imported. So click on it, set collision and untick single sided. Now this makes your object experience collision. So when the cloth falls on it, it will collide with it and bend and support it like any solid object would. Now click on the top plane again and also in the collisions settings, scroll down to collisions and there is a box that says self collisions, tick that. This makes the sheet collide with itself rather than overlapping its mesh with itself. Always try to avoid mesh overlaps, it can cause issues with the slicer. Now click on the upper cube and press tab. This loads up the edit mode view where you can edit individual meshes instead of just the object mode we were on before. Right click on the cube and click on subdivide. Subdivide splits the object into multiple faces. Before we just had one face per side, but each subdivide splits each face into four other faces. It doesn't change the object, but instead adds more points that can be edited, which is good because Blender's physics simulator uses these points to bend around. The more points, the more parts of the model that can bend and the more detailed it can be. We subdivided this seven times and then pressed tab to go back to object mode and on the right hand toolbar, we went to modifiers, which is just two icons above the physics tab. 
we clicked on add modifier, then generate, and then subdivision surface and left it at that. Subdivision surface does a similar thing to subdivide, but it uses an algorithm to smooth out bends so they don't look angular. This will be useful when we start simulating so you don't get a low poly look. We also need to smooth our sheet, so press tab to go back to object mode, right click on the sheet and click on shade smooth. This will make it look nice and smooth when the simulation is rendering. One very important thing for us in this case is ensuring the sheet will fall on our model so it keeps that shape, but also that it doesn't curve around the model. If it does, then you won't be able to actually fit the sheet on the model because it is itself in the way. So we need to create a shape that makes sure that this doesn't happen. We added a mesh just like we did with the cube. So press shift and A and create a UV sphere mesh. First thing to do is scale it so it is the same size as our model. Then press tab to go to edit mode and shift Z to view an x-ray mode. Now shift left click and drag to select some of the top faces. We need to move these so the sphere can sort of form around the model. We just need to make sure it covers the model so any parts of the sheet don't get trapped in empty space. Now look at the top toolbar where you'll see a little orbit surrounding a circle. Click on that. This is proportional editing. Click on that and now scale with S and you'll see a little circle which is our area of effect. Scrolling the middle mouse button will change its size. With proportional editing, it will also scale nearby faces within the area of effect with decreasing intensity so that the scaling appears to be more organic. It's not essential, but for us, it's quite useful. For us, this part is very important, but if you have a very simple model, you might not even need to create this secondary bounding object. Using the num keys, view from each side to see where it should be moved so that the sphere can form a your model. You can scale with S or you can just move the selected faces with G and whichever axis you wish. We're almost ready to simulate, but before we do, we need to set the simulation parameters. So click on the sheet, go back to the physics settings and scroll down to where it says cache and you'll see simulation start and end. By default, the end is 250, which means it will render 250 frames and then finish, which is a bit low for our needs. Bump it up to 1000, which is more than enough. Now look over a little bit to the left where the timeline is under our main view and change the end to 1000. All this makes sure that your simulation will render up to 1000 frames. For less complicated models, you need less frames and for more, you obviously need more. Okay, now we can start the simulation. So go back to object mode by pressing tab and at the bottom of the screen over the timeline, press the play button. It's going to be pretty slow as it simulates, so just be patient. But when it is finished, you can click on the back button and play and you'll see it take its shape. Looks very ghost-like. You can pause the timeline at whichever point you think is best for your ghost shape. If you need to adjust something, then you can just press back and the sheet will be returned to the original position and you can make any changes and then press play again when you're ready and it will restart the simulation with the changes that you made. We're not quite done yet though. First, we need to end the simulation. Just know that after this point, you won't be able to make any changes to the simulation. You'll have to start over. First, click on the ghost and then the modifiers tab on the right side. We have two modifiers running, cloth and subdivision surface. Click on the drop down of each and apply. And now our shape is confirmed. Now you might see we have a trail of cloth around the bottom. I, I don't really like that so much, so I, I tend to get rid of it. Click on the cube underneath the sheet and press shift and Z to go to x-ray view and num one for a front orthographic view. Now move the cube up along the Z axis by pressing G and Z. We just want to go above the trail of the cloth so we can get rid of that and make the base flat. Once that is done, click on the ghost and then the modifiers tab. You can then go to add modifier, generate and Boolean. Click on the eyedropper tool and then the cube below the model. Then click on the drop down and go to apply. And now if we move the cube and the other objects out of the way, we can see that we've cut the trail off and at the very bottom, it's nice and straight. You might also notice that this is just a plane. There's no thickness at all to the shape. It's just basically a 2D sheet. 
Obviously, this can't be printed. If we load this up on the slicer, it's not really going to detect any meaningful geometry. So what we're going to do is click on the ghosty, go to modifiers again, go to generate and go to solidify. This will add some thickness to your model. What you need to do is click on thickness. And for us, we chose 10 millimeters, which is more than enough. Then we can click on offset. Offset value can be either a negative or a positive. If it's negative, then the thickness is applied on the inside. And if it's positive, it's applied on the outside. We want to keep the internal geometry. So we have chosen a positive number here. We can click on the drop down and go to apply and see that the shape now has some thickness. But you might also notice that the bottom of the shape is kind of curved. So we're going to bring the cube back underneath and then go to X-ray view with shift Z and move up that cube a little bit just to cut off the curved bottom. Click back on the ghost and go to modifiers, generate and Boolean. Then click on the eyedropper tool and then click the cube and click on the drop down and go to apply. We can now see that the ghosty has a totally flat bottom, which will be perfect for printing. Okay, we're still not quite done. There's one thing missing and he is missing eyes. What we're going to do here is press shift and A to add a mesh, go to mesh and then go to cylinder. And in the bottom left, you'll notice that a add cylinder tool has opened. And what's important here is the vertices. The vertices are basically how many lines make up the exterior of the cylinder. And by default, it's 32, but that's not enough for us. The more vertices we have, the more curved, more detailed it looks. So change that to 128. Now press S and move the mouse in to scale it down. Now what we need to do is rotate it. So with the cylinder selected, press R on the keyboard and X to select the X axis, then press nine and zero for 90 degrees and it has rotated 90 degrees. Now press S to scale it down even further. You can also scale on the Y to lengthen the cylinder. It's important that it only pierces the front of the ghosty just so that you can have eye shapes on the front. Reposition the cylinder to where your eye should be. And if you notice on the top right in the transform toolbar, you can change the location of the cylinder exactly. What we're going to do is position it at around minus 12 millimeters from the origin. And what we'll do now is select the cylinder, press control C and control V to copy. And we can move that new cylinder to the right, position it at exactly 12 millimeters, just like the other one, except not negative. And we can see that they're equidistant. Okay, but they're too round. We need ellipses for our ghosty eyes. So click on one cylinder and then shift click on the other to select both. Now press S and Z to scale on the Z and we have these more elliptical eyes. You can reposition as you see fit. Now with both cylinders selected, press Ctrl and J on the keyboard. These are now joined, they're considered one object. Now click on the ghosty and go to modifiers and generate and Boolean. Use the eyedropper tool to select the cylinders, go to the drop down and click apply. You can move the cylinders out of the way and now see that we have these eye holes. And that's basically it, you have a ghosty. The last thing you need to do is export the file. So go to file and export and export as an STL. The only important thing that you need here is to click selection only, meaning only the ghosty will be exported and not the other shapes that we created. Now you can just open it up in your slicer and print. Happy Halloween, everyone.